Hello and welcome to yet another Acroganic uh, podcast. This is a video podcast. I'm uh, Fredrik and today I'm joined with our agronomist Christian. Welcome Christian. Thank you very much um, for having me. Yes, and for those who uh, might not know, I expect you do, but Christian is a uh, crop uh, consultant here at Acroganic. And uh, today, uh, Christian, he will uh, present on some very exciting topic on soil organic matter. And I will stand by here listening and might scoop in a question or two. So, so well, yeah. Christian, I will leave it to you. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, resilient soils and soil organic matter. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yes, here you go. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, is on the current situation, climate uh, changes, weather conditions. What have we to work on as a, as farmers? Uh, what can uh, building soil organic matter, getting more resilient soil, continue? Com, com, uh, con, um, content, content, uh, yeah. bringing uh, for for us as benefits and uh, and uh, we have to talk about some uh, some of those ways to do that and uh, what what uh, effects we can get very exciting yes uh, when we look at the weather uh, i'm not uh, i'm not uh, i'm sure that uh, every farmer has uh, <laughs> this year as well uh, all already experienced that uh, the conditions are getting more and more extreme. We have drought in, so, uh, in the start of the uh, season and uh, and heavy rainfall in the end of the uh, growing season and and a bit uh, um, hard to get the harvest done in uh, some places uh, due to a lot of rainfall. Uh, so we are going to have more extreme and we want we would like here to to tell you a little about what can you do to actually make your soil more uh, more flexible and how to to be more resilient to the weather that we are facing uh, because uh, if you believe all the talks about climate change and stuff you 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 not uh, everyone is agreed that we are going to get more extreme weather yeah. conditions for sure the weather and growth season is changing yeah yeah exactly so we have more when we get rain, rainfall we have more water coming down uh, lots of uh, rain more rain tense uh, events and uh, and in the in the drought periods we get uh, less water uh, than we used to have um and and for longer periods with no rain so we must uh, work towards more resilient soils to to get get on top of this because as already said, it's we have drought periods uh, uh, where we have uh, the issue of uh, soil uh, erosion and uh, we have a, a large amount of rainfall in periods and that can lead to also soil erosion like the picture and and compaction of the topsoil and, and the, the media that we're working with uh, gets less uh, Attractive for our plants and and challenging the 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 growth of our plants. So that's very uh, crucial to to uh, to talk about those challenges. Yeah. Uh, what factors factors gives us that resilience in soil? Of course, drainage. Uh, we have to start looking at what is the lowest uh, um, in our. our um, Barrel of uh, what do we call it? Barrel of uh, nutrient limitations, nutrient limitations, and condition limitations as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you have drainage problems or lack of drainage, that's of course will be the lowest uh, uh, what do uh, lowest um, staff. The most the, limiting factors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The limiting factor, and. Um, so, so that's that's the first thing to address is uh, get uh, get your drainage under control, yep. uh, maintain your drainage, drainage, and uh, so on. And if you have uh, soil structural problems, like you have been 
out working the field in wrong conditions, wrong times. Uh, too heavy equipment. Too heavy equipment, too big equipments, uh, to wrong tires, uh, and so on. Uh, also, it can be uh, structural problems which have been before you uh, was on the farm. Uh, you have to fix that. And uh, I actually think soil structure and fixing soil structure should be, we could have another seminar one day about that because that's a topic. A whole big whole, topic by yeah, itself. Yeah, exactly. And we don't want to uh, uh, go uh, into that now. But but that's the thing to, to start look at if you have your drains done, you have your soil structure done, and then of course you need to go your pH, get the right pH uh, uh, level because then you have uh, the best available of the nutrients uh, and that's uh, some of the low fruits to uh, to collect them. So, so work with those uh, and then the last thing and the thing we are going to uh, focus on today is humus and um, and organic matter in the soil because what what can what can we uh, can, can that bring into our soils? And that can uh, also uh, be the, the least uh, yield, yield uh, uh, factors uh, that we're facing. Yeah. So our soils should be able to be uh, drought tolerant, uh, like we have, we need to have much uh, water retention capacity uh, in the soil so we can we can uh, do we can have water for our uh, crops in um, in the drought periods which are getting longer uh, and that can uh, humus can compete come uh, can um, compete com no compete uh, what can complain, improve improve uh, yep. your water uh, re uh, retention capacity and you need a good water infiltration when you have lots of rain coming down one 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 day of uh, for, uh, 70 yeah. 100 millimeters you have a, you need to have a good water infiltration so you don't have runoffs from areas yeah. to um, to not get your soil eroded and lose a lot of uh, nutrients. Uh, and also, if you're in a drought climate, you actually need the water to go into the soil and not yeah, just just stay uh, on top yeah. and rain off. Or yeah, just uh, leave the area. You need uh, yeah. good infiltration. Um, also, if you actually have irrigation, you also need good infiltration to to make a lot of irrigation water yeah, into exactly. the soil. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that can uh, humus uh, compete uh, also as a good factor increasing uh, soil inf uh, water infiltration. Uh, release nutrient for the plants. That's also a thing. Uh, Humus uh, does uh, gives us a lot of um, beneficial from uh, because it's a buffer. It can hold uh, our nutrients uh, very well uh, into us uh, and and releasing it for the plants, giving uh, giving that uh, we can have uh, healthier plants. And that's also what our soils needs to provide. And that was also what humus uh, brings brings us. Got. Good. Uh, our soils are different uh, from farmer to farmer and from area to area. Uh, but field it, to field, field to field, uh, fields. yeah, we know we know uh, that's a difference, uh, and even from corner to corner in one field. And uh, it's uh, um, it can can um, it's it's uh, our soil is uh, may uh, basically sand, clay and lay uh, and silt in the different uh, uh, percentages uh, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, the ge ge uh, ge uh, geology. geology of uh, of soil and it's uh, it's uh, from when it's made and um, those though have though those uh, uh, elements have some di uh, different uh, factor uh, different um, availabilities uh, of course, clay and silt can hold a lot of water as well. But uh, if you have uh, only clay and silt, you have uh, some uh, soil you cannot work with. If you don't have uh, some uh, humus or some soil organic matter into your silt and clay, you'll just have, uh, you know, pottery clay, uh, and it's it's too hard working with, and and you don't get the 
proper seat beds because you cannot uh, you will have clumps and you will get mm -hmm. get it uh, like uh, it will go from from wet to concrete in in uh, no time in no time and and you will have a very bad conditions for your crops and I imagine some of you uh, know this uh, already and have some issues with it so uh, the humus is uh, is binding the soil together and it's uh, say it's uh, it's turning dirt into soil uh, because uh, without uh, humus it's not a living uh, organism uh, our soils it's um, so it actually brings our soil alive and can uh, make it more workable and uh, and it's one of the factors that you actually can improve your soils. You mm -hmm. cannot improve the uh, sand content or the clay con or silt content in your soil, but you can improve the humus content. Yes. So what is this humus? <laughs> what is humus? It's uh, organically uh, degraded plant materials. It's um, it's from uh, you know like lef uh, straw leftover, roots leftovers. And then we have uh, the uh, earthworms and uh, other living organisms in the soil, de degrading it into uh, humus. Uh, the, uh, the earthworm start, starts the process, and then the uh, micro um, uh, and fungi uh, are taking over. Okay. It's uh, it's a, about twenty years half life, so you need to always uh, reinvest in your soils, put in organic matter to, to just contain the levels you're yeah. at. Um, so that's uh, also uh, why it's uh, it's building uh, organic matter in your soil is difficult and maintenance is quite easier, but you also need to at least think if, if you have something which you are quite ca good uh, working conditions in you also need to maintain maintain your soils not to get them uh, depleted depleted or getting uh, getting not uh, workable yes but uh, the main also one of the reasons why it's uh, uh, why we wanted to um, uh, raise the levels of humus in the soil is because one percent of a hum more humus is making uh, our water retention to about uh, uh, 44 millimeters of uh, rain mm -hmm. rainfall uh, and uh, and three times higher uh, water infiltration so it can take three times more uh, rainfall in an mm -hmm. hour yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's some of the really and in the drought period you have you ha actually have one one week more of water uh, in your soil for your plants. Yes. Yeah. And you you can raise the humus content. We have already talked a bit about it. It's putting in organic matter. Uh, many of you put all already straw back to the field, uh, chopping it, and uh, some of you grow crower crops, and some are growing. Uh, Growing uh, 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 grass seeds. Grass seeds is ex excellent because you leave a lot of uh, material back on the field. Yeah. You only take uh, one two thousand kilos kilo of seeds uh, out of the field. Yeah, yeah and uh, and you leave uh, hopefully leave uh, all the straw back, and and you have uh, and sometimes you have the the crop there for uh, for uh, two two years. or three years, almost three years yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and that really can uh, can make the content uh, go high up, and of course, if you have animals and you have you have the, the has, you have you can you remove some, but you also bring some back from manure or uh, slurry, and uh, that's the good thing. And if it's uh, if it's in your areas, is uh, you can also import uh, if it's possible in your areas to import organic matter. It can be can be from compost or uh, other organic uh, materials to in to raise your humus content. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what we like to uh, bring into is that a graduation of the organic matter uh, to put back is, is way too so sweet. Variable up. rate application. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for putting back uh, the organic matter can uh, improve your your 
worst spots because we all have different spots which are worse. Uh, the humus content is too low or uh, can, uh, in the ratio from uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, clay. And uh, so you, you, if you put the back where you really need it to speed up those areas, because you are in a, when you don't do that, you actually in the, um, what we call that in English, uh, <laughs> the wrong circle, because you are removing crops, which is uh, actually um, hard to establish. So you get a le less uh, put back from organic yeah. matter from, from a poor area crop. And uh, and in some places you have good content in the field, which is okay. And there, it's where you you bring all the harvest uh, home. And so you you easily bring yourself in a vicious negative cycle where yeah. bad crop leads to less carbon input, yeah. which leads to less uh, carbon content in the topsoil, which yeah. leads to bad crop establishment yeah. and poor crop, and then it goes on and on. Yeah. And on. Yeah. So how do we break that? Yeah, it's by uh, by bringing out our, uh, our uh, organic matter to those areas. If you have some uh, compost or some uh, uh, manure or something, you can put yeah. that back on those weak spots. And why should we uh, um, variable rate apply it instead of just one easy Be flat rate? Because when you have, uh, where you have best uh, content of uh, of humus, you'll you probably don't need to do anything ju just right now, and you have in good you have good conditions. That's not where you have the problem. So, so it's to like, lift up. Uh, yeah. So it's it's likely that uh, that uh, high um, soil organic matter areas in uh, hill valleys and stuff in the field yeah. are saturated with carbon yeah. and will not respond to uh, will just lead to excessive mineralization of yeah. Yeah. Uh, carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so that an can, economic that... approach of getting the most value for your bucks, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Uh, what else? Um, there's another way of building soil organic matter, and uh, it's also called a liquid uh, carbon pathway. Uh, and uh, pretty simple. It's what's always been, always have been happening out in the fields, and uh, and um, and it's uh, the process of we have we grow plants, which makes the photosynthesis, and uh, a cover, um, con 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 conversion, conversion from the uh, the sunlight into uh, to the sugar and uh, fats and proteins in the plants, and uh, what plants uh, all of course needs for growing uh, leaves and stuff, uh, the leaves we see, and they also need that for growing roots, but also about thirty percent of what. It makes it actually put that out in root exudates, and root exudates uh, they uh, feed the micro uh, fungi, micro uh, what are they, micro uh, organisms in the soil, and um, and they well, it's called the rhizosphere. Rhizosphere, yeah. the rhizosphere, rhizosphere, right. yeah. soil inflicted by roots. Yeah, and uh, they. Um, when they get the, the sugar from uh, from the plant, they uh, deliver back uh, to our um, to our plants uh, nutrients, which are for the for the roots, uh, small root hair, not able able to to seek in the soil, uh, and that's actually is is an extended uh, root uh, network of uh, getting nutrients to a plant. So mm -hmm. so and and the 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 when when they uh, make the change that you get some from your, you get your plants get some and uh, the micro um, rice get gets some uh, and also maybe some no uh, the uh, micro rice rice fungi uh, is one of those processes which can provide your plants with with the non available p uh, phosphate for for your plants and and the rest rest uh, the the turnover uh, from the uh, mitral uh, fungi and stuff is uh, is uh, humification they they leave in when they die off they leave in uh, humus in your soil so you're building uh, humus uh, where the roots are 
Um, how do we maximize this uh, this process? Uh, it's if you have uh, healthy plants, you'll have more root exudates going into the soil, which give you a better micro life in the soil. Uh, living uh, plants and roots all year, so you uh, feed this process all year round, and you uh, maximize the input of from your sun, because uh, when you when if you just lay, have a half a year uh, uh, stubble field with no growth in it, mm -hmm. you don't get you don't catch any sunlight to put to feed in your micro uh, life in your soil. Yep. And uh, least thing is that when uh, disturbing our soil, we we actually uh, put too much air into a soil, which harm the micro life in such way that uh, we actually uh, uh, we actually kill some of the fungi and they get bad conditions for those. So so we don't have the quite the right uh, levels from bacteria and uh, yeah. fungi in the soil. Yeah, so just um, to add it, so it's it's in fact that the very definition of perennial plants are that they invest much more in the root systems. Mm -hmm. And that's also why we see that perennial plants are having much larger root systems and yeah. a much larger uh, root exudation yeah. uh, process compared to annual plants, yeah. which by the very definition do not invest much in their root system because they yeah. die off within a year. So perennial plants and create carbon by having living roots but also uh, roots uh, or, or plants which are legumes are producing much more for the micro life as well so yeah. as a, actually the the crop rotation with the legumes uh, crops is also beneficial for this yeah so you could say in you could kind of say that legume plants are leaching so they are yeah. leaking carbon out yeah. of the roots compared yeah. to grasses yeah. and other plants okay yeah. right um Yes, and so also how can we do this? Yeah, exactly. How can we how can we maximize uh, the catch of our sun? Uh, not building uh, solar panels, but uh, building mm -hmm. uh, building our soil and uh, getting uh, it can be done by various uh, thing, uh, companion cropping uh, by having crops seed in uh, with your uh, that could be in your OSR uh, rape seed. You can seed in some uh, clover, uh, red clover, or no, not uh, uh, some clovers, uh, which are not getting too too big, and uh, and they can be there ready to catch sunlight when you harvest, mm -hmm. and already producing um, uh, this uh, um, uh, liquid uh, pa carbon pathway, uh, and also multi-year uh, living moles. Uh, alfalfa living moles can be uh, some of some are uh, trying out that you are uh, at I your can own relate farm. to that yeah uh, you are trying at your own farm uh, yeah. Frederick. that's a topic for another time yeah that's also yeah. a topic how to get that uh, worked in and um, we uh, what also can be done is to uh, to uh, spread cover crops before harvest yeah. and that's also a topic in, for interseeding or yeah, you could call yeah. it interseeding or under sowing yeah. where you have it already established yeah. by the time of uh, so so you so you catch sunlight from the day that your uh, your main crop is starting to uh, to mature and stop this uh, photos uh, photosynthesis and uh, they take over and you actually get you can easily get one month more growth from your uh, cover crops or uh, between crops uh, cover yeah. And uh, that's that can be some of the tools uh, for maximizing this uh, process. Yeah. If we look at what uh, the difference uh, of uh, bringing uh, or applying uh, organic matter and uh, the the one uh, liquid carbon uh, pathway, is that the liquid carbon pathway builds soils uh, in depth, uh, humus in depth, because where you have the roots, you get you build in uh, you build in uh, humus. It's good for optimizing water management, getting yep. uh, water infiltration into the deeper uh, root systems, uh, lower of your soil. And uh, applying organic matter can also be quite good. And we have your we have our earthworms for 
uh, taking some of it down, but but mainly it will stay in the top soils. Uh, and it's good for fertilizer optimization, optimization yeah. and and um, effective on uh, on so topsoil compaction uh, to to eliminate that. Yeah. Um, and the the tillage uh, part about it, it's uh, we also think that um, tillage harm this process of. Uh, of uh, it's but it's also because it burns uh, carbon. Uh, of course, it gives you uh, mineralization uh, when you put in uh, when you when you work the soil, but but also um, and and but it burns off our carbon and our humus in the soil. We uh, wanted to to build up. Uh, so so, but that's also mean that if we're starting no tilling and. Uh, Try to to watch out for those. Is that to learn uh, the another flow of uh, nitrogen in the soil? We have the soil in different uh, time of the year and stuff, and that's something that we uh, work a lot of with. Mm -hmm. So, so what is uh, three things to to remember? Is uh, targeted uh, variable rate. Uh, application of your um, of your organic matter in the uh, in the worst spots uh, to to get uh, to get a top of uh, low uh, humus and then uh, maximize your photosynthesis and uh, mineral your soil disturbance reduce your soil disturbance as yeah. much as possible yeah exactly to to best yeah. to the minimum yeah can, that can also they can work for getting a healthier and resilient soil yeah. Yes. And well, uh, if you want to know more about this exciting topic, uh, we have included here uh, how to reach. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Christian yeah. to learn more about this uh, topic, you can of course also read both our blog on our academic uh, website, and yeah. you can also find uh, contact infos, etc., uh, through our website. So. Um, Go to agroganic.com and learn more about uh, some of these topics. Yeah. Well, Christian, uh, thank you very much for your uh, your presentation and your overview uh, of this uh, very uh, exciting yep. uh, topic. Yep. I think it's uh, it's very important to add in these perspectives for for farm managers and agribusinesses to work about because I would say farming is not about farming. It's not necessarily about farming today. It's also about being able to farm for tomorrow. Yeah. And this is one of these very important farming for tomorrow topics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So to be able to actually farm in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on hundred in hundred years or yeah. on a lower perspective in some places. Yeah. And also because what, what we work a lot with uh, our clients is also to ask the question, are we a mining corporation mining the soil or are we a farming business investing in the future of being able to farm tomorrow? So, and this is yeah. one of the important uh, topics of this. Exactly. Well, but but also it's 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 a, a question of investing in your soil because this doesn't come for free. It's it's a it's you have to because you don't pay bill, bills by uh, chopping your straw and putting back into soil. But but it's an investment in in getting your soil in a better condition and able to to grow better yields and better crops in the future. Yeah, I think it's an important thing. One thing is the yield part of it. Yeah. Uh, which can also be severely limited by straw application in the soil, which is not used to straw application. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's also about, I would say, investing in these resilience factors for having a sustainable crop production in the future. Does my soil blow away, rain away? Does the water infiltrate, yeah. as you mentioned, which yeah. I think is very highly important parts of this because you cannot necessarily measure it in the bottom line and on the yields yeah. in day one, but no. it's about these resilience factors. Yeah, I would exactly. Think. Yeah. 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 Well, um, thank you very much, Christian. You're welcome. And thank you for you to have uh, listened and made it to the end. Yeah. You have uh, listened to the end, watched the Aquaganic video podcast. And uh, here at Aquaganic, we change farming for good in order to farm for the future and implement exciting regenerative agriculture technologies in the future of your farms. Yes. So uh, see you another time. Bye. Bye.